Welcome to Envisioning Success, the weekly podcast where Laura Di Benedetto and Julia Becker Collins share tips, suggestions, and stories to help you succeed in business. In today's episode, we explore five strategies for handling and leveraging online reviews, such as encouraging reviews in person, seriously considering suggestions and critiques, utilizing outbound links, and responding to reviewers, regardless of their tone or opinion. And now, here's Laura and Julia. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Envisioning Success. I am your host, Laura Benedetto. I am joined by the lovely and talented Julia Becker Collins. Today, we are going to rock your universe one more time, and we're going to be talking about some myth busting. I wish we were as cool as the guys on TV. Sadly, you just have to settle for us. Wah, wah. So today, we're going to be talking about online reviews. A lot of people mistakenly think that online reviews don't matter. Well, Guess what, kids? Yes, they do. So we're going to be walking you through some of the finer points of online reviews, how they can really help your business grow, how you can absolutely screw the pooch and get it wrong, and uh, what to do instead. Pro tip, don't screw the pooch. So first things first, let me just mention, this show is lovingly sponsored by Vision Advertising. We're celebrating 25 years of kicking ass and helping businesses grow the easy and not frustrating way. So if you're ready to take your company to the next level, don't call Ghostbusters, call us instead. (laughs) What? It's funny. Listen, we record on Thursdays and punchy on Thursdays. It's how we roll. It's it's the uh, je ne sais quoi of the uh, episodes. It's really... (laughs) (laughs) It's what makes us funny and hilarious and conversational is that it's the end of the week and we're losing our minds. For all of our seven listeners, we appreciate you out there in wacky podcast land. Listen, I was checking this morning. There are some episodes that are in the double digits. So, yo, (laughs) I'll take it. Listen, for all you seven listeners out there, or maybe like 11, share the show. Maybe we'll make it to the 20 somethings. Yeah. Big jumps. All right. So you ready to learn? Dig out your notepads or if you're driving, don't do that. But let's learn. Julia, let's talk about the first point. So when you're thinking about how online reviews don't matter, and we very much believe that they do matter, one of the actionable tips is to embrace transparency. And if you have been listening to our podcast for a while, or if you've heard me speak in other settings, you know that transparency and communication is one of our values at Vision. We highly, highly value transparency and honesty. And it is somewhat of a coincidence here. That that's one of our actionable tips to respond to reviews because yes, they do matter. And you want to respond to both positive and negative reviews. You want to show that you have a sense of what's happening at your business, that you value feedback, whether it's constructive or positive, and you're committed to improving. And one of the things about this is that I want to put a little asterisk here and say, please don't yell at people in your responses. That's not going to help. We have a blog post that we can link in the description of this episode that talks all about why responding to reviews is so important and how to do so with negative reviews. And our wonderful producer can take care of that for us. But one of the things to keep in mind is people are going to have their opinions and that's okay. It's not your job to change their mind. It's your job to make sure they feel heard and to listen to them. And for the other people that are going to read those reviews to see that you care about what people are saying. And so one of the things that you can do when you get a negative review is instead of, and I have absolutely seen this happen, instead of yelling at the person in the comments or in the response and saying, you have no idea what you're talking about, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes people throw in an F-bomb. You want to say something along the lines of, I'm so sorry you had that experience. We absolutely never want any of our customers to have that experience. 
you know, we strive to do better. I'd like to speak to you individually. I'm going to message you privately so I can learn more about this so that we can do better in the future. You're not saying that what they did or didn't do happened or what they're saying happened. You're acknowledging their feelings and making them feel heard and seen and that they are okay to say those things. And most of the time, I'd say eight times out of 10, people calm right down when you say that because really they're just trying to tell somebody what's going on. Yep, that's very true. There's a lot of psychology behind this. I mean, a lot of people are very afraid of confrontation. So like, let's say, you know, you're, you own a restaurant. Restaurants tend to get more reviews than other business categories. And we've been working with restaurants for years. Post-COVID, not as many. You know, COVID was not kind to restaurants, but let's use it as an example. You're going to see lots of people who are non-confrontational and, and like say something goes a little sideways in the restaurant. They don't really want to create a scene. People don't want to have a conflict. People don't want to face uncomfortable emotions. So instead of saying something to you in the restaurant, giving you an opportunity to fix it, they'll oftentimes do the wrong thing and post a nasty review online as an attempt to be heard or, you know, catch attention or whatever. This is where you have to demonstrate your humanity. You know, good reviews I'll talk about in a second, but bad reviews, they happen. Bad reviews are your opportunity to shine, like really pay attention to that. I have seen people yell at their customers, like in all caps, the all caps is yelling online. I've seen people swear, oh my God, don't do that. I've seen people get very defensive. I've also seen people blame and get passive aggressive. Oh my God, don't do that. It's just gross. And then like just using really grimy language and like, well, you know, I'm sorry you had that experience. And, you know, that's a shame you didn't say anything. It's like, no, don't do that. Actually respond without emotion and understand what's really happening. That person wants to be heard, just like Julia said. So take this opportunity to really shine and let someone feel heard. So let's say they write you a big, fat, nasty gram. Fine. Take Julia's advice. Hey, we hear you. We'd love to actually talk with you and make this right. You know something? When that's handled really well with grace, I've actually seen a lot of the reviewers go back online and change their review and update it and say, you know what? Now I'm going to leave them a four or even a five star because I love how they treated me. So this is your opportunity to really build an incredible reputation. And like, don't get butt hurt and aggravated when you get like a one or a two star review. You're like, great. I'm about to earn a loyal customer for life because now I know that I have a chance to shine and like dazzle the business out of this, right? So you can do that. Now, in terms of good reviews, I see lots of people also make the huge mistake they will respond to only the negative reviews, but then they never thank the positive reviewers. Are you high? What drugs are you enjoying today? Who raised you? No. In this world of adulting, we have a little thing called manners. And we like to thank people when they say nice things, because here's the truth. Nobody owes you a nice review, even if you do a good job. I have been in business for 25 freaking years. You know how many times my clients have said, thank you, damn few. Mm -hmm. When someone actually takes the time to thank you and tell others that you've done a good job, you know, you're not owed that. That's not something you deserve. That is a gift. Mm -hmm. If you don't say thank you, you're a schmuck. So always say thank you. Always diplomatically, kindly, and emotionlessly respond to negative reviews. And pro tip, this is why you have a marketing agency because we don't have the big stupid feelings that you have and we'll actually respond objectively. Or you could have someone on your team do it for you who's eloquent and really good at talking people off the ledge. Exactly. I really, I couldn't agree more. It's you need to be responding to all of the reviews, constructive, negative, positive, et cetera. People want to feel heard. And so when you respond, that usually solves most of the problem. Yep. What's the next one, Laura? You might be surprised by this one, but you can actually boost your search engine ranking by encouraging reviews, but also responding. It's called inbound links. Mm -hmm. That's a big part of search engine marketing strategy. So search engine marketing, for those who don't know, is making sure that when someone goes to search for whatever it is they want to buy, if you're the thing they're looking for and they don't know you yet, you come up first, right? Or early in the search results. 
that's what search engine ranking is, right? And then optimizing search engine optimization is the actions that you take to help you to get to the top of the ranking. So one of the things that helps people to get better ranking and get more prospective customers see them is having relevant, credible inbound links. And here's what this looks like. Your website, no offense, it's probably about as popular as ours, where like, there's not thousands of people going there every single day. Sorry. I mean, I'm not going to pump up your sneakers and lie to you. Like nobody cares about your website until they actually need something from you. Mm -hmm. But guess what? People are going to Yelp every single day. People are going to Facebook every single day. People are going to all these websites every single day. And the search engines determine that these websites are credible. They're credible because they are popular. And when you have websites driving traffic from them to you, you get to borrow their credibility, which boosts you. Let me put this in simpler terms. When the cool kid at lunchtime in 11th grade is like, yo, hang out with this guy. Boom. You got street cred. So what? No, it's (laughs) just funny. All I can hear in my head is that Kristen Chenoweth song where she goes, popular, you're going to be popular. popular. (laughs) Yes. No, I saw uh, Wicked on Broadway and it was amazing. I saw Wicked. My husband took me to see it for my birthday one year and it was amazing. And there is a movie coming out and I am so excited. Yay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for it. <laughs> I'm like really excited. I'm wicked excited. I, <laughs> fun fact for our listeners, The Wizard of Oz used to be my favorite movie for like most of my life. So mm. Yes. Very cool. I know. I know. So anyway, you want to be popular and leverage the credibility of the cool kids. And the cool (laughs) kids in this case are the Facebooks and the Yelps and the trust pilots of the world. You want outbound links going from their websites to yours. And that's called an inbound link for you. Mm -hmm. And that is super, super important. Julia, why don't you tell them point number three? Tell them what they've won. Tell them what they've won. So point number three, actionable tip number three is to leverage for improvement. And this goes back to what Laura and I have been saying this whole episode, using the constructive criticism in reviews to refine your products or services. It shows your customers that you listen and adapt and that you are receptive to feedback. I just had a client meeting recently where they were happy with certain things and not happy with other things. And that's okay. We're human. We make mistakes. As I say to everybody all the time, it's not the mistake necessarily that matters. It's how you respond to it and how you react to it. Do you see it as a learning opportunity or do you wallow in it? Do you get defensive? 99% of the time, a mistake is an opportunity to create a situation where you become that person's hero, where you become that person's best friend. And I always thank clients or prospective clients when they give me constructive feedback, because not only is it an opportunity for learning and it continues the conversation, it shows that I am receptive to the constructive feedback. And I'm glad that they felt comfortable enough to give me the constructive feedback. It also makes you a safe person to talk to. Exactly. A safe person to do business with, because that means you can handle good, bad, and ugly, which means that if something's not working according to the way they want in a very high stakes environment like marketing can be, you're a safe person to talk to so they're more willing to invest in that relationship. Right. It's, you have to remember we're all human beings, right? We're not, I, you know, none of us are chat GPT. We're not robots on the other side of the computer. Thank God. I know. So people make mistakes and people also have wins and you just need to, like Laura was saying, have humanity in all of this. Don't let your big, stupid feelings get in the way. Receive the feedback. Sometimes the feedback is out of left field and you really didn't do anything wrong, but that person still has those feelings. And if you want to maintain them as a customer or show other potential customers that you're receptive to that kind of feedback, it's important that you respond to it. And I can't say this enough. The reviews matter. They just do. Mm -hmm. Very true. You just made me think of a point that I have to make to add to that. Like, pretend that you and I are standing across from each other and I have just painted a six on the ground and I see six. Well, you're across from me and you see nine. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, we're both right. Correct. The point here is that 
your perception of reality doesn't mean it is the objective reality. It's just your perception of it. And that's how the other person feels. And this is just a great thing from any relationship dynamic overall. It's you and that person against the problem, not you against the person. You have to, my God, take the advice. Take your big, stupid feelings and put them in the bin because it ruins more things. It ruins more relationships. And when you can actually bring humility to it and look at it objectively and be like, damn it, I could have done better. Just say that. It's okay. You don't lose face. You don't lose dignity for doing that. In fact, it actually helps you win. Mm -hmm. So thank you for all of that. No problem. What is the next one, Laura? So encouraging more reviews. So let's say you get some of those dreaded poopy reviews. They happen. Hey, I've been in business for 25 years. I assure you I've pissed off at least a few people along the way, right? It happens. It's just Again, you're a human, you're not perfect, it's normal, right? But if all you do is wait for people to get their undies in a wad and then post when they're angry, that's all you're going to have and your reputation will be tarnished. If you can work to make sure that the entire truth is shown, that will be important. The core of this that really matters for you to really pay attention to is people are more inclined to post reviews when they're mad than when they're happy. Negative news travels 20 times faster than positive news. Okay. It takes one, don't they say like it takes a lifetime to build a good relationship and like seconds to destroy it. Mm -hmm. This is the case here. Now, no human behavior, know it. When you know it, you know that people are disinclined to write positive reviews because it doesn't occur to them to do it because they're busy. Things are working or they're not saying thank you or they're just keeping on, keeping on, and things are fine. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Your job is to make sure that all of your customers are writing reviews about you, not just the cranky ones. Because if you get only the cranky ones writing about you, your public perception will actually decline. You don't think so, but it will. Yes, people choose their restaurants based on Yelp. People choose businesses they want to do based on like Trustpilot. And I think there was like, house or whatever, where you can actually shop for contractors. I don't know if that's the one. Angie's list and house. Angie's list. That's the one. Thank you. But like people make decisions because they don't know how to buy what you sell based on other people's opinions. So you have to understand that and think, yes, this matters. Because if you're mistakenly thinking, oh, reviews don't matter to me. They're not going to affect me. You are sadly mistaken. You're screwing yourself over and you're making a huge mistake. So how do you encourage more reviews? Well, you take these two fleshy things on the front of your face and you start flapping them and actually speak to people. So I've been doing this for a very tragically long period of time. Wait, is it 25 years? My God, I feel like a fossil. <laughs> I mean, a cute fossil, but a fossil nonetheless. I've got a spot with my name on it at the Smithsonian. Just you wait. So the thing about this that you have to do is actually speak to people. A lot of restaurants will make this mistake. I'm just picking on restaurants today because, you know, Yelp is the most common review platform for those. And it's just an easy target, right? Restaurants will make the mistake of putting out a QR code, putting it at the host stand. Guess who cares? Nobody. Guess how many reviews you're going to get? Maybe one when someone's pissed off when they're leaving. No, the correct response is to train your wait staff on. I really hope you've had a really positive experience with us. How was everything? Oh, it was great. Here's a little piece of paper with the QR code. Would you mind scanning this while you're here and writing out a quick review? This would really help our business and help me be able to keep my job. Like if you incentivize your staff to actually speak about it, it's important. Right. So you can do this with other types of businesses as well. Another business that I was running recently built up a ton of excellent reviews because after every single online purchase, there was an automation that about eight days after the purchase was made, the customer would have their order in hand and they would receive an email inviting them to go to Trustpilot and write an unbiased review of any type. You can write a crappy review if you want, but anytime we get anything less than a four star or anything less than a five star, you know, we got on it. And guess what? We had five star reviews across the board because we A, responded to everything, B, worked very hard to get the reviews and make sure that we had a proper, accurate view of how we functioned. You have to do that with your brand as well. If you, again, only take what happens 
that is rolling with dice that I don't want to play with Mm -hmm. because you're basically accepting a negative bias. And that sucks. That can actually desperately hit you in the wallet and really hurt you. Because guess what? If you're still maintaining your whole staff, you know where that hurts you. That hurts your owner's distributions. That hurts you specifically. You might even be forced to lay people off. So take this seriously and make sure that you get as many reviews as you possibly can. I have a story. Can I tell a story? Yes. Yes. Okay. Guess you'll have to wait for the last one because we've got a humdinger. (laughs) Again, not to pick on restaurants, but this is about a restaurant. I was in a sales meeting with an owner of a very popular restaurant. This is years ago, pre-pandemic. I think 2018, 2017, long time ago. And he said to me, and he did not have, he had like mixed reviews, probably like solid three star, which was not representative of what he was providing. The food's excellent. The service was kind of eh, but the food was really, really good. He should have been over a three star restaurant in terms of reviews. And he, I said to him, you know, we can take this over for you. It's a really important part of marketing. And he waved his hand in the air and put it in my face. It was an in-person meeting, which, you know, first red flag when you start gesturing in my face. He said to me, reviews don't matter. Nobody reads them. I refuse to spend money or time on dealing with them. And at the time I was training somebody in sales and it was a perfect learning opportunity for me to be like, and what did we learn here? (laughs) Because that was a good way to have him opt out of being a good client for us. But also if you so firmly believe that reviews don't matter and you are running a business that is so review dependent, you are living on Mars and you have decided that reality isn't reality. I don't even know if the restaurant's still open. I have no idea that didn't go anywhere, but I was also like, "Mm, I think we're done here because you think black is white and up is down. And I can't explain that to you. Right. It was crazy. Well, here's a little uh, extra point on that one. If your marketer who is known for being an unabashed truth teller is vehemently disagreeing with you, even at the risk of losing the sale. Yep. Maybe listen. I would very much agree with that. I think, you know, we've had this conversation on episodes before about how do you decide if you should outsource or how do you hire a marketing partner? And if you haven't listened to those episodes, I really recommend you go back and listen to them because one of the things we talk about is telling the truth, even if it requires that we lose the sale or maybe we make less money. Because you want somebody that is going to be transparent and will tell you the truth and isn't just in it to be like, well, I made the money and I'm going to walk away and I don't care about your business. This goes back to transparency like we were talking about earlier. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. All right, now you can tell them the last point. Okay, I will give you the last but not least actionable tip for today's episode, which is to showcase your reputation, which might seem obvious. But given the story I just told, apparently it's not. (laughs) Reviews feature, you know, when you feature positive reviews on your website or in your social media or in your marketing campaigns, it enhances your business's reputation. It shows that you're an expert at what you're doing. And it shows that outside forces, people, businesses, etc., really think you're doing a great job and you're not providing lip service and just being like, I'm the best. And there's a past episode where we talk about if you call yourself an expert, then you're not an expert. But this is having somebody else say that you're great at what you do. And since the majority of business decisions and personal decisions and financial decisions are often made based on referrals, Having those reviews is like a cache of referrals. It is. And I can't overstate the importance of it. Yeah, it's more of the cool kids saying, hey, give this guy a shot. That's really what it is because peer reviews are so much more important. I mean, Julia and I can tell you till we're blue in the face that we're good at our jobs, high integrity, and we take care of our clients and help people make money. But you should not believe us because we could be lying to you. We should believe is our clients. Right. Right. What the hell do they get out of telling you that we're great? Nothing. We don't pay for reviews. And by the way, you can't either. So yeah, you get to showcase your reputation. 
Yes. And just to speak to that, it is a violation of the terms of service of Yelp for you to provide anything in response to somebody leaving a review. I know lots of businesses run contests or offer you a coupon if you leave a review, but I'm just letting you know that you're violating the terms of service if you do that. Thank you for that powerful and incredibly useful addition. All right, kids, next time we're going to be talking about websites. That's another line of BS that people are like, I don't need a website. I have social media. Eh, wrong. So we're going to get into why that's a mistake and real specifics about how a website can benefit you. Look, here's the truth. Not everybody wants to spend the money on websites. We get it. We know what we charge for them. You do need them, but we're going to give you some really solid insight. So hope this was useful. Just a loving reminder, make sure that you go back and listen to the uh, previous episodes. You're basically getting a complimentary MBA listening to this show, and you're learning all about marketing and you know how much you're paying? Attention. That's it. And leave us a review. <laughs> yes, please. That would be super cool. And uh, if you leave less than a five star, I'm calling you because I want to know what we could do better. <laughs> No ego. We're just here to win. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I'm Laura, joined by Julia. Thanks for listening to Envisioning Success, and we'll see you in the next episode.